Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is your brother, Adania. I'm coming at you with a video. Um, before we get started, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh is the name of the Holy One, the Most High Power. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one that the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of Israel. Uh, before we go any further, I got to give a hearty shalom, a hearty shalom to, uh, to our brothers that's laboring. That's out there enduring all, all types of demonic attack. Enduring the elements is real cold outside right now. But brothers that step still out there, they ten toes down just to help seal the elect and do their part. Shalom to them. Another shalom to the brothers that's uh, preparing to go out. They doing everything they can, which is reading, praying, fasting, giving alms, and uh, doing everything they can to make their election sure. Right, Shalom, Shalom. Another Shalom to the sisters, the uh, the Aqua that's at home, reverencing their husband, taking care of the household, this uh, being teachers of good things to the children at home. Shalom, Shalom. Now, uh, <clears throat> I want to start off today's lesson by uh, asking Israel a question real quick. Um, and I, I know that you know this particular question that I'm about to ask. It pertains to me also, because I was also in this predicament a lot throughout my life. But I, I'm asking if um, any anyone in Israel might be watching this video. Have you ever felt uh, a little set apart or strange or different from others? Maybe your, your friends or the ones you call your friends or your classmates, uh, people that you work around. Um, so on and so forth. And I'm asking that question, of course, because myself coming up, I oftentimes felt different, weird, strange, not like the others, not quite doing with, uh, what I saw the other, other kids doing. And a lot of the people that I came across didn't really, uh, really care for me. And I'm wondering if that's others, or I'm asking if that's others uh, within Israel my brothers and sisters that's dealt with that sort of uh, that, that same type of upbringing coming up almost as if people know you um, even though you may have never seen them before but they automatically don't like you or it's just something about you that you know uh, don't really sit well with them usually the types that are uh, well liked surrounded by people and for some reason, something about you and you can't quite put your finger on it. You know, what it is it about you that makes you uh, so not liked or so uh, disliked by them and by others. And, uh, you know, coming into this truth, I came to a realization, you know, Yahweh reveals this thing, uh, things like this to us through his word. And through his precepts and, you know, really diving in and studying, you begin to realize that there was a there was a reason. Um, and these spirits, they do know you or they, they know you in the third heaven. It's because the, you have something in you. And that's something that they that they, they can never take away. And it's something that they can't pull out of you. And that's a certain light that you've got in you. Uh that light was given to you by the Lord and that light is always going to guide you um, and it's going to make the jobs of those evil spirits and demons, you know, because a lot of these people that we come across today, you know, they, they're they being controlled, they're being ran by these evil spirits, they're demons and demons, we understand that demon only means deceiver. So they're deceivers of people. And we understand that that's the way of this world today that we live in, it's filled with demons. And in order to fit in, you kind of got to uh, be on demon time, so to speak, or as they say, you kind of got to move as they move and do what they do. And if you don't want to do the things that they do and move how they move, then you're automatically going to be set apart, cut off, um, attacked, you know, talked about all these different things. So we come to find out that we are the light of this world. And we carry a, a very special light in us that would allow us to see in the darkness. 
and that our enemies, they work in the darkness. That's how they operate. And if they can't mislead you, if you have the ability to see them, then of course, you're going to be a threat to them. So we're going to go ahead and kick the lesson off. I want to start in Deuteronomy 14. This is a classic precept that uh, myself and the brothers, you know, we, we bring this precept out all the time when we're teaching and we're talking to, uh, we're talking to Israel, we're talking to Judah, and we're, we're, we're uh, telling them who they are and proving these things through the Bible. So just like in Isaiah 28, we, you know, we, we, it's precept upon precept. And it's nothing that we're saying off of our own uh, understanding or from our own rhetoric, but it's directly from the Bible. And we would never want to give you uh, or mislead you by giving you something that it's in our hearts and something that we've created. We're going to go directly from the Bible. So before I get into that precept in Deuteronomy 14 and 2, I want to bring that, that classic out. In Isaiah 28 and 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So as always, like I say uh, all the time, everything that we present to you, if we present it in a factual sort of basis, then we're going to prove that through the scripture. We're going to prove that by linking precepts together and then breaking those precepts down so that they make sense to you. The viewer, whoever's, you know, whoever's watching within Israel. So the first uh, precept we're going to dive in, we're talking about letting your light shine in this world. Not being afraid of that light. Not trying to put it out because you can't put it out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. So uh, explicitly, this particular precept is telling you like, yes, you are a peculiar people and the most high set you apart so that, you know, so that you can be a people unto him. So it should not surprise you. It shouldn't depress you if these uh, other wicked nations, um, you know, talk about you or uh, cast you aside or throw you away, discard you or treat you as if you're not one of them because honestly, quite frankly, you are not. You're not one of them. You are a chosen people, a holy people. Yes, you are peculiar, but you're set apart for the most high because he's got greater things in store for you. So don't worry about not being like everybody else. Worry more about learning who you are as an Israelite. And <clears throat> what does it take? Because it's not enough to know that you're an Israelite. But what do you do next? What happens next? These are all good questions. Um, I want to move on in the lesson because we're going to, it's going to be brief. <clears throat> we're going to go over to Proverbs. We're going to go over to Proverbs 4 real quick. This is the book of Proverbs. This is chapter four. We're going to start at verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So you can imagine a wicked person to be a lot like a blind man that is stumbling around, don't have his cane, kind of tripping over things. You kind of uh, stub your foot on something, it hurts. You know, you kind of go, ah, ah, ooh, ah. Um, and you are, you have the privilege, you've got this flashlight, you've got this lamp, this lantern with you. And this lantern is shining your your it's shining your path, it's shining your way. But this blind man, they cannot see that light. And that's a lot like the wicked. The wicked are blinded to the point where they can't see the light. They can't have that light. That just shining light that's spoken of in Proverbs 18. That light that's going to allow you to see through the darkness. 
they will continuously trip over different things. And we're not talking about actual things that they're tripping over. We're talking about false ideologies. We're, we're talking about getting lost and caught up with the cares of this world. Uh, we're talking about following Christianity. We're talking about following Islam as if those are the ways. And you find yourself, they find themselves tripping over these things. You know, getting lost in into the uh, in, in the in the in the lust of the of the eyes and the things that you want, going after these things, trying to get that degree, trying to get that new whip, that new car, uh, you know, trying to get that job, whatever it might be. You you have no direction. You cannot see that you're actually these are stumbling blocks set before you that's going to keep you from that marvelous life. Right. So let's go ahead and keep going. I want to go to First uh, Corinthians now. Chapter four. Bear with me just a moment. This is the book of First Corinthians. Four. And we're going to start at. One. We're going to start at the top. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter four, verse one. Let a man so account of us. As of the ministers of Amashiach and stewards of the mysteries of Yahweh. So we are being called upon to be guardians, guardians of that light. <clears throat> so like, yeah, guardians of our household to keep it, to make sure that it's being used in a way that is productive, uh, and that's what it means to be a steward. The, the very definition of steward is house guardian or housekeeper, right? So you are a keeper of uh, the mysteries of Yahweh. And, you know, when you think about that, what bigger responsibility is there to be privileged to have this sort of, have these mysteries, to understand these things that most of the world, they, they've been fighting forever to try to understand fighting forever to um to get just a little bit of that light a little a little bit a little just a little bit of understanding that i mean you, you have an overabundance uh, over abundance of right let's move on we're gonna go over right next door to second corinthians and i want to stay in chapter four and we're going to go to verse 4. This is the book of 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the power of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. So just like I was saying, you know, the wicked men and women, these wicked nations, they have been blinded and that's purposeful. The Lord has intentionally blinded them. I'll read it again. In whom the power of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The ones who don't, who don't want to believe. The ones who say there is no God. The ones that don't trust in his light and trust in the, in, 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 uh, and trust in the word with all their heart and lean on and lean upon that and not their own understanding, right? He's intentionally blinded these men and women so that they cannot see what you can see, which is what? That's the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach. That light is is, is nothing else other than the law, statutes, and commandments. The word of Yahweh, the word of God, which is in these, was written on these pages, which is meant to guide you throughout life, just like a lantern, just like a lamp shines through the darkness. Because without it, we are surrounded, engulfed in darkness, and we would not be able to see our ways out if it weren't for the light of the gospel of truth. Right. Let's move on further and we'll go to Matthew. Go 
go to the book of Matthew. I want to go to chapter 5. And we'll start at 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an uh, Salakia. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. You cannot hide your light. You are set upon a hill in this world. That means you are supposed to be creme de la creme. You're supposed to be the guiding light. These nations are supposed to come to us to in, in order to see their way through the darkness, right? You cannot hide it. You cannot put that light out. As a, as a youngster myself, I found myself many times wishing that whatever it was about me that people didn't like, that people saw in me and, and didn't really care for, that I could be like them. And I can do the things that they do. But you cannot, you cannot hide that. You can't take it out of yourself. You have to allow yourself to be used as that light. Because there's going to come a time where people will come to you because they can't see for themselves. Just like we talked about in previous precepts, like in 2 Corinthians, this world, these people, these non-believers, they have been blinded pur uh, purposely. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 to be exact. They have been blinded purposely. They cannot see. Right? But you have a light. You've been given that light. This light is the gospel. That light is the word. Let's move on. We're going to go to Mark 4. If you want to know what light is, that's light. It ain't, it ain't E equals MC squared. Like uh, Einstein told you. Right? That light guides you. The light is your only hope for seeing your way through darkness. I'm in the book of Mark. I'm in chapter four and I want to go to verse 21. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad. That means you cannot hide this light. A light is no good if you hide it. If you put it under your bed, if you turn that, if you use a, you need a flashlight, you turn your flashlight on and you, let's, you put it under, under the bed. It's not, I mean, you can't see. I mean, you can't use it to see your way through your dark, through the dark house. I mean, you're gonna be hitting your toe here. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be tripping over that, right? You need to have that, that light with you in order to see with it in the same way you're not going to be able to get rid of that light that's up for the lord that's up to the lord to decide that if he wants to take that light away from you but that's not something that you can hide because it's going to come out eventually and they're going to see it and they're going to know so you may as well embrace that light and use it for its intended purpose, just like any light. Let's move on to the book of Sirach. This is in the Apocrypha, otherwise known as Ecclesiasticus. So we're going to the book of Sirach. Chapter 17. And verse 18. Whom, being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, and giving him the light of his love, doth not forsake him. That means that the Most High gave us the light of his love. He gave us this light. Right? Don't forsake that light. Don't cast it away. That light is your only hope. The Lord gave it to you. Why would you throw something away that the Lord himself gave to you? You 
You're going to, I mean, in the long run, you're going to be so, so glad, so thankful to Yahweh that you were able to see that he gave you eyes to see, that he gave you that light of his love. Because we would all be utterly lost without it. No telling where any of us would be if it had not been for that light. Uh, let's go back to Matthew. There's a lot of precepts in Matthew. Not only about life, uh, light, but about how we should move in this world. What we should, uh, what we should do, and it, it takes a certain amount of understanding that the Most High is more than willing to give to you if you know how to ask, if you if you just ask for it. And how do you ask? You pray. You pray for the wisdom and understanding of the scriptures. Because the Bible will talk a lot in similitudes, in parables, in dark sayings. And without that understanding, you may not quite grasp the point of, of what they're saying. It wasn't until I got into, uh, until I became active within the truth and really started getting into studying um, jotting down precepts, reading for myself, and praying for that uh, knowledge, that wisdom, that understanding of the scriptures, that things would begin to make sense, and I would be, and the right guides would be set before us, uh, be, uh, before me, that would show me how to understand these things properly. Right. So uh, I'm in the book of Matthew. And we're going to Matthew 6. We're going to start at verse 21. And it reads, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? You've got to have an eye that's going to be set solely upon these scriptures, solely in the word. you got to have an eye for it. The eye is going to act like an, it is the light of the body says here clearly and that's that's fact that's a fact the eyes act like cameras and in order to work your eyes are receiving information receiving the light and your brain interprets what it sees right so that eye acts like a light and whatever's coming in whether it be good or whatever it be evil is going to fill your mind that's why you have to be careful what you lock your eyes on got to be careful, careful what you lay eyes on, uh, upon. You got to be careful what you set your sights on. Because just like that, you can be filled with darkness, with wickedness. It's very, very easy. Right? Let's, let's move on to uh, John. I'm going to go to John. I'm going to go to John real quick. We're going to stay in John for a while. This is the book of John. We're going to chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But, ye, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in Yahweh. So that's pretty much what we've been saying, what, what, what I have been saying throughout the whole lesson, that you are set apart. You're not liked by these evil spirits because they see that light of truth in you and they hate that light 
because it, they, you can kind of see what they're up to. You can see them with that light. If they're trying to get away with something, they're trying to do something, they don't want to be seen. So if you got that light, you can see them. They hate that. All right? This light, you know, I used to stay in the projects. Uh, you turn the lights out, man, and everything will be covered in, with roaches. And as soon as you turn that light on, they all scatter. Right? These Some of these evil, wicked spirits move in the same fashion, the same way. They trying to get away from that light because they can't do what they do in the, in the presence of that light. It's going to reprove them. Meaning it's going to show them their wicked ways and let them know that it's uh, that the Lord disapproves of these things. He takes no pleasure in this wickedness, in this darkness, and in the evil, twisted deeds. So you've got a gift. It's not a curse. It's a gift. Right? And that gift is going to, as long as you trust it, as long as you follow the light of truth, you will be able to see your adversary and see how they work and what they are doing to you. It's only when you are cast into darkness that you begin to trip over these different things, that your enemy can manipulate you and lead you down a path you don't want to go down. Basically, lead you somewhere you ain't trying to go. And the whole time, and you, you trust this particular individual, you just you just couldn't see. You was lost in darkness. And they knew you was lost in darkness. They took advantage of that so that they can lead you where they wanted you to be. And this is one of the benefits of uh of having that light. Right? Uh, let me read that again. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. This is the purpose of light in this world. And men love darkness rather than light because their evil deeds, I'm sorry, because their deeds were evil. They like the darkness, the darkness they can hide, the darkness they covered up. Like the old worldly saying, the freaks come out at night. They gonna do their works. They gonna do their worst works during the night when they feel like they cover. They got cover. It's harder to do them things in broad daylight, right? Let's move on. We just gonna go to. Uh, we gonna stay in John. We gonna go to chapter eight. This the book of John, chapter eight and verse twelve. Then spake Yahweh shy. Again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Yahweh shines that light that leads you in truth, that shines and reproves these wicked and evil spirits. If you trust in him and you let him lead you, he will not lead you astray. He will not deliver you into the hands of darkness. He's going to shine a light on these situations. He's going to be that beacon during that storm. We can see your way back. You can see your way back because without him, you're going to be without that light. And we understand that Yahweh Shai is that light. Without him, you're going to be tossed to and fro here and there, much like a vessel out on stormy waters. Wherever they want to pull you, they're going to be able to take you and they're, they're going to be able to take you there. And there's no, there's nothing you can really do about it. You won't, you, you, you won't be able to see. You cannot tell that you're being misled. You cannot tell that you're being led to destruction. You, you may even believe in some of these evil spirits. You may believe in some of these things, these wicked agents of chaos that sent to you to derail you and destroy you. As they are being destroyed because they could never have the light. They cannot have this light that you can have. So choose light today. 
Don't allow yourself to be cast into darkness. And I promise you that light will not fail you. So we're going to get one more precept and I'm going to go ahead and close out. This is the uh, book of first Peter. And I want to go to first Peter chapter two, verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's pretty much the whole meat of the lesson that we just went through today. That's everything you need to know about why you're not chosen amongst these people, why they don't like you, why you feel different, why they, uh, why they hate you. Because you're chosen. You're, you're royalty. And the Lord is not going to allow his royal people to be destroyed in darkness like that. So he gave you a light. And that light is Yahweh. That light is the word of God. Right? So allow yourselves to be led by that light because he called you out of darkness. I can testify to being literally called out of darkness to walk in this light. And I, I go off every day. I need to pray for repentance each and every day. But I thank Yahweh also each and every day for allowing me to see this light and walk in it. Because without it, I would be utterly destroyed. And with that, I want to bid a mighty, mighty shalom to everybody. I want to thank you for uh, the water, for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you were edified. Hope you got something out of it that you can use. Kwam Yashallah. Shalom.